a Labour government that created full employment, a welfare state, a national health service, and gave my generation the best quality of life of any in human history. And that, that, that government so won the argument about turning our back on the past and having a fairer society, that when the Tories came back to power in the 1950s, they broadly carried on with those policies. And then the second election of my lifetime that changed things was Mrs. Satter in 1979. And just as that post-war Labour government set the agenda for over three decades, that's what Thatcher's government did. And we can now judge, was it right to make the changes she did? Smash the unions, roll back the state, cut back on public spending. Has it created a better Britain? The growth of our economy in these last 35 years hasn't equaled what we had when we had a fairer society. And there's a simple <coughs> reason for that. If you put money in the pockets of ordinary people, they spend it in local shops, on local goods and services, it circulates around. If the money gets sucked up to a small elite at the top, they don't spend it in local shops, it ends up in some dodgy bank in the Cayman Islands and things like that. And the simple reality is this. In the last seven years, since the banking crisis, the richest thousand people in Britain have seen their wealth double. Whereas almost everybody else has struggled just to put food on the table and give their kids a chance. And the simple fact is that Thatcher managed to persuade Tony, I mean, I don't know if you saw Tony Blair on telly the day Mrs. Thatcher died, but he said, I thought it was my job to build on what she achieved, not roll it back. Well, I wish he told us that when he was running for Labour leader. I mean, that was a fatal mistake. And now we can make a, a clear assessment. This last 70 years, 35 years of fair tax, growing public services and full employment with the, the nonsense we've had subsequently <coughs> that has left hundreds of thousands of people behind. And therefore, this election, and I think this is what is so significant about Ed Miliband. I mean, I, I first met him when he was 14, because his, his older brother used to work in my outer office when I was leader of the GLC. And the thing that strikes me about Ed Miliband is he doesn't, he didn't come into politics because he wants to be popular or he wants to be loved, which is very wise, because you want to be loved, go to show business, not politics. It never works out like that. Ed Miliband, when you're with him, is talking about what we can learn for the German apprenticeship scheme or the regional bank system you've got in Germany. What we can do to rebuild our manufacturing. What we can do to actually get a fair tax system. He's there to change Britain. And that's absolutely crucial. Because if we don't make these changes, our kids and our grandchildren are not going to have the opportunities that we took for granted. And if Cameron and Osborne were to get another five years in power, this country wouldn't be worth living in at the end of it. They will subtly and craftily privatise the NHS. They've got all the structures in place to do that. They'll carry on not building council houses. <coughs> They'll continue to neglect our, and not rebuild our manufacturing base. And look at here in Bradford, a, what this city has lost. Because for the last 35 years, governments didn't assume, they assumed, let the bankers create all this wealth, it will all trickle down, but it didn't. You've got to get a better balanced economy. We need a government that's going to seek to actually encourage a more diverse economy, giving working class men the chance of a good job. When I left school in Brixton, I just went to a school where I was going to university, but every boy left that school and got a job. And after two or three years, that job paid them enough to keep a family. And that sort of economy has been wiped out because we neglected our manufacturing. But you've got to sell something to someone else on the other side of the planet. We've got the biggest trade deficit we've ever had. And what I want to see is working class men getting the chance to have a good, secure job. A job that will come with a pension. A job that can be passed on to their children. We can't continue to have a system where a small elite in the centre of London, who don't give a damn about London either, they're a part of an international uh, elite, effectively of bankers and corporate giants, who have no allegiance to any nation. 
And when I came into politics in the 60s, the Tory party was filled with local businessmen, they were all men, who'd actually created a, a, a good local business, they believed in our country, they thought they were making a contribution. What business now is it's the Googles and the Starbucks and the Amazons that have no allegiance to any nation and they just move the wealth they created around so that they don't get to pay tax anywhere. I want to see a Labour government and Red Maniband bring the tax system back into fair play so that the very richest and the great corporations pay their fair share and that sustains a better society in which we can invest, we can actually see the rebuilding of our manufacturing base. And then the other thing that is so crucial, I mean, I grew up on the council estate and my parents were happy and proud to live there. And now we've seen 35 years without governments building homes for rent. And it's created, I don't know what it's like in Bradford, but in London it's a nightmare. People pay over half their income uh, in terms of rent. It leaves them nothing to actually be able to spend to sustain the local economy. We've got to start building again. And one of the things that is very good about what Ed Balls and Ed Miliband are saying is increasing house building to 200,000 and building homes for rent so that people can actually get a decent home to live in with their family as part of secure community. And nothing creates more jobs than house building. If you set out to build another 100,000 homes, it creates work for three quarters of a million people. Not just the people building those homes, but they spend it in local shops on local goods and services. We've got to remember what worked in our past and what has failed. And this idea that somehow, if we just deregulate the banks, they can lift us all into some nirvana and we can all live off what trickles down from their pockets. That hasn't worked. We need a better based economy. That's what Ed Miliband gets all understand. And that's what's absolutely crucial about the way we go forward. And then just one, it's about where we stand in the world. I mean, you've seen this last two or three weeks, as Ed Miliband's been able to get into these debates, everyone's always been so much better than we thought. Because what did they see in the Daily Telegraph or the Daily Mail? We've had five years of the demonisation of Ed Miliband because he represents real change. And nowhere more so than on that vote on Syria. For the first time in my lifetime, I saw a Labour leader stand up to the United States of America and say, we're not getting caught up in another one of your wars in the Middle East. And I want to see us standing back from that. I don't want to see more of our young men being sent to die in wars which are basically not about democracy or anything else but about the control of oil and the giant corporations. I want to see a Labour government that puts our interests first and just doesn't see us there as some sort of okay, applauseometer for whatever the United States of America is doing. We need to represent the interests of our wider community and build a better world. And I believe that's what a Labour government under Ed Miliband will do. Not simply going along with America's imperial objectives, but actually arguing for a better and a fairer distribution of power and wealth around our world. I said, in my lifetime, only two elections have changed Britain. I believe this will be the third. That's why it's the most crucial. I don't care what else you could do in the next slightly over two weeks, give all your time to getting out, identify the people that are going to vote Labour, make sure you're there on the day to help get them to the polling station, send us down to Parliament to work, to build a better society in Bradford and in Britain and around the world. This is the third election in the last 70 years that can change Britain. Make sure we do it and do it here in Bradford West. Thank you very much.